Hello there, and we're looking at uh, verbal reasoning codes. These are type N codes. So there are four words. Three words are given in code, while code for one word is actually missing. The codes are not written in the same order as the words. So we need to work out and choose a code for the word tear, T-E-A-R. So let's have a look at the pattern first of all. And let's have a look and see which numbers could possibly match which particular letters. So first of all, let's look at something that's in common. So we have an A in the middle. There's an A in the middle here, and another A in the middle there, and we have an A right at the beginning of this particular word here. So as we've got four A's in these four words, let's try and pick out what A could possibly stand for. So we have a six in the middle there. We have a six in the middle there. Now, because we've got one, two, three A's in the middle of the words, it's likely that six stands for A. Okay, so very highly likely that the number six is going to stand for A. So let's do this. So let's put A here. Let's represent six as A. There we go. Okay, now, as we can see here, we only have one word that begins with the letter A. That means that this particular word R could be, could represent six, seven, nine. So let's put R there and let's put E there. Okay. I hope that's clear. Now we know that seven represents R and nine also represents E. So any other letters that we have here that are already represented, let's just fill these in. So nine, we can see here, we can see here that the number nine represents E. So let's just put down E there. Any other nines? No, nope, that's it. So this particular word here starts with EA, and it's likely that it will be eat, which is this word here. Okay, so let's just uh, make sure that we've covered all our bits here. And this obviously is R. Now we've got one and seven here, so this one, one word left. So looking at seven, we can see from here that seven is R. So what word could this be ending in AR? The only word that I can see that ends in AR is this particular word here, far. So one could be F. So this is how we actually work out by looking at the patterns. So I uh, always follow the following patterns. So look at the first letters to see if there's anything in common. Look at the last letters and then you can follow the middle letters as well. All right, so this is a pattern that I generally use. You don't have to use this pattern. You could do it your own way as well. Now let's work out the final bit towards our question, which is um, trying to work out the code for the word tear. So T E A R. Let's have a look. So what does T represent here? So T represents three. And we can see this from our representation from that word here, eat. What does E represent? E represents nine. 
What does A represent? A represents six. And what does R represent? And in this case, R represents seven. So our answer is going to be three, nine, six, seven for this first particular question. Again, use a similar pattern. You look for the first letter, the last letter, and the middle letter as well when going forward to try and work out what the best example is. Let's do this one together as well, just to give you some extra practice on these questions. So we have fair, r, eat, and oak. We've got nine, six, three, six, seven, nine, and one, six, seven. So let's look at the first letters first of all. First letters. Are there any common first letters? So we have F for far, A for R, eat for E, and O for oak. So there are no common particular double letters there, similar letters. Let's look at the last letters. So with far, we have R, R, we have E, eat, we have T, and oak, we have K. So there are no common double letters here. Let's look at the middle letters and try and work out the middle letters first of all. So we have A, R, A, and A. So here we have three words that have A as the middle letter. That means, looking at these numbers, six could stand for A. So six could stand for A. Okay. Let's just write that down first of all, so we know what we're talking about. So we've got two words, and both the middle letters uh, are A, and they represent six. So we've got another six here. So let's just fill that in as well, okay? Now we've only got one word that begins with A, which is R. So it's likely that this could be R. So let's just fill in the rest of the letters here. So R. So now we know that seven, six stands for A, seven stands for R, and nine stands for E. So this now makes it easier for us to actually work out what the other letters um, and numbers represent. So here we've got nine represents E. Let's just fill in E here. Okay. And seven represents R. So let's just put down R there. So can you see how easy it is now to actually fill in the rest of the missing blanks? So in this case, the first word is here is going to be eat. Uh, we've already got R in the middle. And the last one that ends with AR um, is likely to be far. And now this way we can actually work out what fate actually represents by working out what F and A and T and E all represent. Okay, so this is a slightly difficult task. Try your best. And if you do struggle and um, you're not able to complete this properly, don't worry. We'll be going through these in our lesson in detail. Okay, thank you and good luck.